Well, hello everyone. If you're new around here, I'm Sabs, also known as Sustainable Sabs on Instagram, where I talk about all things sustainability, zero waste, veganism, and a lot more. Today I'm home in Texas, which is why my background looks a little bit different. So a while back I was talking to my mom on the phone and she told me that she started doing some bulk shopping. So I told her I would come home and make her some produce bags. I went to an event from Buffy and I had this pillowcase left over. I've kind of made produce bags once before, um, but it was definitely a little bit different than this. So this is gonna be kind of a new thing for me. So you guys are gonna watch me attempt to make these and we'll see if they actually turn out. No, they're gonna turn out fine, probably. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna actually open this up. Here's how big it is. I actually dyed this naturally using um, natural plant dyes. If you ever have like white sheets or clothing or something and you wanna dye them naturally, you can use actually some kitchen ingredients. So if you wanna turn something pink, you can use avocado pits. Uh, you can also use onion skins to turn uh, something like a brown color. I think what I'm gonna do is cut at least four bags, one, um, in each corner, I'm kind of gonna go off of what what's already sewn so that I have the least amount of work to do. In doing so, I'm only gonna have to sew up one side and I'm gonna sew all this by hand so I'll show you guys exactly how I do that. My sewing skills are very minimal so it's not gonna be the most beautiful job. So first things first, I'm gonna actually cut this fabric. I definitely recommend using a lighter material, so something like um, like mesh if you have it. This is a tensile, which is derived from eucalyptus fiber. I definitely would recommend at least having an idea of the tear weight before you go to the bulk store. So I'm probably gonna try to weigh these out individually, the bags once they're all finished. Um, and then just have it as a reference whenever my mom's going to the store and she wants to have the extra tear weight taken off. Okay, so now I have two separate pieces of this cloth. I'm gonna start off cutting, actually, yeah, I'll cut each one of these in half so that in the end it ends up making four bags. And that way, two of the sides are already sewn up, so I'm only gonna have to sew up one of the sides. I'm just folding this in half so that I can get these uh, bags to be as evenly sized as possible. I have one, two, three, Four. So now I'm gonna just sew up the sides. Um, see how it goes. My mom's sewing kit. All right, so I found white thread and some needles. I feel like this is just gonna turn into like a mukbang, but for sewing instead of eating. So hope you guys like that. Oh, first try. Look at me. Who would have thunk? I'm not gonna cut the string off yet because I don't know exactly how much I'll be needing, so this is gonna hang out right over there. First of all, I'm gonna turn it. Oh, should I turn it inside out? No, I don't need to. Okay, so I'm gonna be sewing it on this side. You'll notice that there are some frays on the edges. Not the most beautiful. This is going to be the inside and then I'll flip it out and that'll be the outside, so. Well, let's just get started. So, I don't know about you guys, but the first time I learned to sew was when I had to sew uh, patches on my Girl Scout vest. I think depending on what it is that you're trying to use this for. Oh, I definitely just did that wrong. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> I actually do have to cut this string. So I'm just gonna make it really long and then I have to pull it through. That's why it seemed like I was doing this wrong. Like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just trying. So, don't judge me. I'm just trying really hard. All right. You know I have a sewing machine at my house. Are you serious? Yeah. Good, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna suffer through this. Thanks, bro. Yeah, like you literally just feed it through. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate one, um, by hand, it's going to be very messy. And then I'm gonna probably try to sewing machine the rest of them. This version will be for the people who don't have sewing machines at home. Here is my shitty, shitty <laughs> sewing job so far. So if you're curious, I'm doing a stitch that whose name I do not know and I could not ever tell you. 
you're always like pushing the needle through the same side of fabric. You're kind of just going around like a loop. So it's almost like a spiral notebook kind of look. And I wanted to do this because um, I feel like it's just uh, probably a little bit better reinforced than if I went like, like in and out. None of this is technically as sturdy as um, a sewing machine. Okay, so I figured out a solution. While I was stitching this, I actually just pulled the string really tight um, from the side. And as you can kind of see, it's now a little bit more reinforced. So it looks like this bag probably won't like let anything spill out. And as I sew through every like two or three holes, I'll just pull uh, tightly on the string, have like an even better hold on the words. Where are they? Another thing that's kind of beautiful about doing things like this yourself is it's sort of a meditative experience. I'm just trying to find reasons to feel less bad about spending all this time. How does it look? Yeah. I'm getting there. It'll, it'll look better soon. Mom approved. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, my French grandfather was a tailor and he used to make leather bags and jackets and like all that kind of stuff for French companies. So I guess you can say sewing runs in the family. Just kidding. I'm not good at this. Okay, so I'm a little bit more than halfway done. I'm trying. And this is just on this side. I still have to work on this top part. Another thing is uh, you can kind of see these stringy bits. As I come across them, what I'm doing is um, I'm like laying it flat kind of over the side of the seam and then I'm just sewing over them so they're held in place by the string. My final stitch. So now I'm just gonna tie it and 45 minutes later one part of this is finished. <laughs> so my next big endeavor, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the side and fold it kind of like this, and then sew, making sure not to poke all the way through all of the layers. That way this can stay as like the opening of the bag. I'm actually also gonna use some safety pins to hold everything in place. That way it's not lifting up too much. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a different stitch for this. Instead of going over the top, I'm gonna go back and stitch. Woo, okay, here we go. And there you have it, folks. When I flip it inside out, I have a very nicely stitched little produce bag. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it worked as well as it did. Okay, I guess the last question is how do I tie this? Maybe I'll add like fabric that will like sort of dangle on the side, um, two pieces. When my mom goes to the store, she can kind of just like use that, tie it around. I guess I could just like put rubber bands inside. That's me being lazy, but also I have to leave. It's 3.40 and I'm supposed to meet a friend at four. I'm gonna bring this with me. Let's test this out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have you ever made produce bags before? Let me know about it. What stitches did you use? What fabric did you use? I'm curious to hear. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.